Hello, and welcome to week three of the UNPL Spring Fling. I'm Zand, and I'm hoping to get a little luckier this week. Uh, we're searching. We're getting straight into it. Our opponent's ready. Uh, he did ping me and say that he locked in his team, and then a little bit after that, he noticed he got an ability wrong. Unfortunately, there was no time within the kind of schedule left for us to battle again, because we would have to wait until this comp ended, and that would be like 1 a.m. for him. So just, we couldn't really remake it. So um, he said it's fine and it's on him, so we're just gonna send it. Looking at his team, I can only imagine the messed up ability is either Halucha or Ndidi, just as a guess, uh, because I have definitely messed up Ndidi before. It always sucks to not put terrain on your terrain mons and not put uh, weather on your weather mons. So, uh, you know, you gotta roll with the punches sometimes. I hate that that happened to him. Uh, that's why I usually check over my mons before I prep, but I've definitely made mistakes before too. It happens to everybody. And there's still a great chance we lose because our opponent has things like Shell Smash, Blastoise, Dawn Fan's really annoying. So uh, definitely tough. And you might recognize the name. We've actually played Kingler recently uh, in the NBBL. He was our week seven, I believe, and very well could be an opponent in the playoffs over there if we make it that far. Uh, so, looking at his squad, he did not bring the Haxorus, which I'm happy to see. Uh, Lucha Didi is here. Dawn Fan is here, and it kind of had to be because I do have Reggie Lucky. He does have the Blastoise. No Chandler I actually like. He does have Tinka, does have Indeedy. No Wochen, and it likes for the Vileplume. I was almost sure that Wochen was going to be here, like some annoying foul play Leech Seed set. Uh, I almost brought Bombard over Cobalion, but I really like Cobalion's speed. Uh, and I knew I wanted one of them as my lead. Uh, looking at the team, you might think it's a little weird. Um, but these resist berries are really nice, and we're Terra Fire on our Bolova, but I doubt we'll ever actually pop it. Uh, it's just kind of a bait to make him second guess. It was honestly to make him second guess what movie clicked with a spec chandelier. But uh, yeah, uh, we'll send it. We'll see what happens. I feel like we're bringing some fun stuff. Choice Scarf, uh, Ileki always outspeeds uh, both Halucha and Blastoise at plus two. So I thought that was a really nice spring. And uh, Sarah Ledge is a bulk up. I thought that was kind of cool. Bulk up Will-O-Wisp to help us deal with his physical attackers, which... Honestly, he doesn't have that many of this week, uh, so maybe more coverage would have been better than running Willow. And he just messaged, and his Vileplume is Terra Fairy. So that's good to know. Uh, I don't really know what that does for him. He does lead the Vileplume. Uh, I am not positive what this thing got in Gen 9. I can check real quick, see if it got anything interesting. It doesn't look like it has much for Cobalion. It could set Sun and then Weather Ball me, I suppose. But I don't really know. I guess it could Strengths at me and be annoying that way. I mean, we're not doing much to it, but this is a pretty free Stealth Rock, I think. He does stay in, maybe Sleep Powder comes out, and I'm totally fine with Cobalion being my Sleep Fodder. This is my least valuable member on this team, 100%. Does just strength sap to be annoying. Uh, immediately lowers our attack. I, I don't know that this advances the board state that much. I can click Thunder Wave here, and the only thing that comes in on it and doesn't get paralyzed is the Dawn Fan, which Dawn Fan is a really free uh, bring here. I could go into our Bolova. Uh, we are Seed Sower this week with the Grassy Seed on Primarina kind of as a win condition. It does look pretty solid into the squad he brought. I kind of like just going into our Bolova here, honestly. Um, yeah. I think we either catch the double or he clicks. He's not clicking Sludge Bomb into Cobalion, surely. It has to be the Dawn Fan, right? Okay, he does switch. Do we see Dawn Fan? Uh, Poe, don't know who that is, but I can only imagine. It's Halucha, okay. <laughs> Yikes. So I could have clicked Thunder Wave there for free. I decided not to. I mean, I could definitely Terra here. If he CCs, that could be really bad for us. 
So I try to get a little fancy with it. I'm trying to make more aggressive moves because I feel like sometimes I kind of fall back into the same plays. He took rocks damage, so there's actually a chance he drops to an alluring voice. I don't want to Terra, but I have to in front of Halucha. It's unfortunate. Obviously, he could just click CC, and I could go into Sarah Ledge, who I don't think actually looks that great into his team outside of the Tinkaton. So I actually think I will go into that. I will save the Terra. I don't need to pop that yet. I just made a bad read. I thought there were two options he had, and he picked a secret third option, so... Not great on us, but it's fine. He does just SD. Wow. So Alluring Voice would have been amazing there. Now, I wonder what he has for us. He is a plus two Halucha. Does... If he's Wakan Berry, he might eat a Thunderbolt. So I think it might actually be in our best interest to Shadow Sneak, as funny as that is, and just kind of give up the Sarah Ledge. I don't really know how he knocks me out, but I, I, I'm just making all the wrong plays. So I think it's best we get Chip in case he is Wakan Berry. So we'll just do that. He probably knocks us out here. I'm okay with losing Sarah Ledge. I think it's not as valuable here as it could have been. He acros with an item. Uh, it does quite a bit of damage, but we do get our weakness or our weak armor. Um, I don't think that matters. I think I'm just clicking sneak again anyway. Uh, adversely, I could click Willow, but I don't think we ever... Actually, he's not unburdened, so we definitely do outspeed this, and we can get a Willow up. Uh, whether or not that matters, I'm not sure, but we can at least click it. We do land, so I try to run as few moves with less than 100% accuracy this week as I could. Uh, so, like, Dragon Pulse on Flygon over Draco and things like that, which normally is not a good play. Does knock us out because of our defense drop due to our um, weak armor. But we do have a burn, and he's effectively at neutral right now. So we kind of have options. Uh, best option, obviously, is Reggie Lecky. I think we will just do that. And if it does force in Dawn Fan, then we just go hard into uh, our Bolova and we try to start getting set up that way. I think this has very little value for him, so there's definitely a good chance he leaves it in, and I really don't want to lose my only answer to uh, Shell Smash Blastoise by overpredicting, clicking Terra Blast, not knocking him out, and then he knocking me out back. So, yeah, uh, what do you guys think of low tier? I think this is probably my favorite way to play uh, Draft League. I really like the non-meta Pokemon getting a chance to shine, uh, so I think it's a lot more fun. It does go into the Tuskules, um, yep, so Donphan comes in, I mean, it, it's a fair play, I just didn't want to risk anything. I will just go straight into our Bolova, uh, get our terrain up, and then we can see about going into Primarina. I thought it would be cool to have a jetpack leaf storm so we could insta pivot into like slow pivot into Primarina. Uh, just wasn't great optics. Um, I really like having the Yachi Berry because almost all the best coverage he has to hit our Bolova is ice. Now this could definitely have Gunk Shot as opposed to Ice Spinner, but I think it's a lot more likely this has Ice Spinner or Ice Shard at least because we also have Flygon. So I think that made sense to me. Uh, whether or not he built it that way, you know, it's completely up to him. Uh, he does click gunk, so we might just drop to this. We don't drop to it, but we take an insane amount of damage. Do get poisoned. So, he's making all the right plays right now. Absolutely blowing us back, uh, which is funny. I mean, the easiest two switches to Dawn Fan are weak to poison, but I also do have a flag on. So, very, uh, tough couple turns there for me. I think I can actually hard pivot into Cobalion here because I worry about another gunk shot or an ice move coming out. Could also click high horsepower and knock me out um, if he decided to bring that, expecting the terrain. But I will at least force him out. Okay, so he hard switches first. We know he's faster, which I think was guaranteed unless he was Trick Room. Does go straight back into the Halucha. So we once again find ourselves with a bad matchup into this Halucha. Uh, I should just be clicking attacks. I need to stop switching so much. I think that's my biggest problem right now. 
Uh, we definitely live a hit from Burned Halucha. I don't know that Iron Head knocks him out in return. It looks like it should. Uh, but actually, we'll force him into something else. I think I do just want damage, so I will just click Iron Head. If he CCs, that's fine with me. Uh, unless he's super bulky, he definitely does not live the combination of Iron Head and Burn. I don't really like burning my um, red card now. I liked having it in the back in case we could live a hit from Blastoise if he was like timid. But it's all good. Uh, he seems to be saving Tinkaton. It might be his answer to Primarina. Maybe it's Encore. We're actually faster, so this was definitely meant to be a uh, Seed Halucha. And it does drop. Oh, and I did not. Who knocked out Sarah Ledge? Halucha did. So Halucha ended up going one and one. Cobalion's one and something. And Tinkaton is the switch in of choice. Uh, it is Mold Breaker. So it's not Pickpocket. It's Air Balloon. Okay. Uh, for Flygon. That's very smart. Uh, it actually is immune to our dual stab. I do like Thunder Wave here. I think he could honestly Thunder Wave me back, but I'm okay with that. So we will Paralyze. It is Tinkaton with an Air Balloon and Mold Breaker. He sets his own rocks, which doesn't matter to me very much because uh, our only rock week is already down. Now, our Bolova <laughs> might die to rocks plus poison, so that's not great. Uh, we'll just click Iron Head now. Uh, we are playing a little bit of a para flinch game. Our red card is still online, as funny as that is. So we'll see what he decides to do. I could have gotten an idea of that Dawn fan's investment. Uh, it looks to be... I can't really tell. It did about 75%, so it may not be all that attack invested. Um, it would have done about 82 minimum if it was max attack adamant, so I do think it is a little bit more defensive. We'll just click Iron Head here. It does a decent chunk. It seems to be a more specially defensive uh, Tink. Uh, he does just play rough. This won't do much, and then he'll get forced out with Red Card. So we do threaten a Para on something else coming in. And it is the Vile Plume. Uh, a Paralysis on this really doesn't matter much, but it does mean we suddenly outspeed it with our Bolova, and we guarantee to outspeed it with... Um, our Pokemon that I cannot think of the name of. Guaranteed outspeed it with Primarina, but probably outspeed it with our Bulova as well. Grass does go away, and we do need to get that back up, even though our guy is poisoned now, so we have to take a hit. So we have to come in on an attack, and that might be more difficult than it sounds. Could just go for a Para on this as well. I think he has every reason in the world to just click Strength Sap again. Uh, he does switch. It might be the Dawn fan. Is the Tink. Which is totally fine with me. Seems like he might want a free switch into um, maybe Blastoise or Ndidi. I just don't think um, Valplume has anything to hit us. Now what would be really unfortunate is I try to bring in Arbalova to get the terrain up. And he got paralyzed, <laughs> and then we dropped the combination of rocks and poison. That would be kind of worst case scenario. So I won't do that. I think I will just hit this. I do think Iron Head is a two shot on the health he has left. It definitely is. And he does get flinched. Uh, I think the odds were about 50 50 there. So apologies. We'll just click one more Iron Head. And Tink does go down. Cobalion gets two KOs, and I didn't even want to bring it this week, so that's kind of funny. So he's got Dawn a Dawn Fan with Gunk Shot and a Bulky Val Plume left. And obviously a Dawn Fan that we have no good switch ins into. So what I will do, I think I let Cobalion go down here. Actually, I think I bring in Arbalova. And I hope he clicks any move with 100% accuracy. Because I th we should have enough health here. Uh, yeah, we have... <laughs> we'll die to poison for sure. 
but I just need him to hit me. So let's see. I could also go Flygon here, but I'm I really do need to get Primarina in on the train. He does click Earthquake, which is great for me because that does get the train back up. I think that always KOs. It is a Dawn fan, so decently strong. Uh, if he is max attack versus our pre Marina. Gunshot's still doing over half. But I think it's okay. If I get rid of Tink on the calc and I get rid of our Bolivar. I mean, pre Marina really kind of goes crazy here. I know I'll take a chunk from this, but the plus one defense is really going to help us out. This is a close game. I'm really liking what he brought so far and how aggressively he's playing. I'm assuming uh, with the, him mentioning that messed up item, it pretty much has to be uh, the Ndidi because he hasn't brought it out at all. So I, I, it ha it, so I can assume it's an inner focus Ndidi, maybe train extender, maybe something like Scarf. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, I think Surf always cleanly knocks this out, no matter what. I can only imagine. Yeah, Surf does a crazy amount of damage. We might outspeed. I'm not that invested. He does just switch, though. Uh, could go Stoice. Uh, Dipsy. I think that is the only Pokemon we haven't seen. It is Stoice. We'll go for a Surf. And, okay, he just gets grassy terrain. I was about to say he's Leftovers. Blastoise, okay. Um, if he is Shell Smash, I can't imagine anything two shots us or one shots us after he gets a Shell Smash up. So I'm going to click when Calm Minds. He's Yawn. Okay, that's annoying. So a Moonblast would have two shot him, pretty much guaranteed. Now we're in a little worse shape because he will have the opportunity to set up. But I will get to smack something with a very strong Moonblast here. Uh, if he goes for Shell Smash, he has to be White Herb to not die to this Moonblast. He is Flip Turn, so he's not Shell Smash. So our biggest threat is not a threat. So we're good there. Uh, something eats a Moonblast. I guess Valplume's his best option. Um, or he sacks Ndidi here. Those are kind of his two real options. I don't think he gives up Dawn Fan. Because two Gunk Shots will knock us out and we will be asleep after this turn. Uh, it is the Valplume. I feel like this still takes a good chunk. And it shouldn't really be able to do anything back, I don't think. So Moonblast does about half of his remaining health. That's pretty good. Uh, makes me think he's Fizz Def. Is this, this is Leftovers, right? Not Black Sludge. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that would have been awkward. We do fall asleep. A Sludge Wave from Valplume with no investment does not two-shot us from where we're at. So I think I will play the odds on waking up, at least give us one turn. Uh, it seems like he expected us to be a relatively fast Primarina with how quickly he switched Dawn Fan out. So I think we have that on our side. I actually don't have very much investment. So if he is like hardly any speed at all, he probably outruns us. So I think this Primarina is at least slightly less valuable than um, I'm acting like it is. I do think... Based on defensive Blastoise, uh, he's keeping that Dawn Fan at full health, and he's keeping Ndidi in the back. Makes me think maybe it's Scarfed Ndidi. So he does Terra. I'm trying to think. Flygon should be able to clean this game up. I imagine. Uh, I think I eat one Scarf Gleam from Ndidi. We definitely always outspeed it. So we do outspeed Valplume as well. It is Moonblast. This should not do much. Yeah, it does not do very much. He has the chance to get drops, but that's not really doing anything. Yeah, that's, uh, I think, slightly invested, but it's not really an issue. We do lose our healing, our passive healing, but Moonblast does knock this out. Draining Kiss is another option we have if we want to get some health back from it. 
I could definitely click Calm Mind here as well. I mean, odds are we don't wake up this turn. We don't wake up this turn. So I'm okay eating one more Moonblast. Sludge Bomb. Okay, so he went for Moonblast first. I don't think another Sludge Bomb knocks us out, but we definitely also don't knock him out with anything. So I think what I can do is hope we don't get three turns of sleep, go for Draining Kiss. And we'll get enough health back to live a Sludge Bomb. Uh, he opts to switch instead. Save his health on Vileplume. Goes back into the Stoys. So, a lot of switching. We've forced him to pivot some. We do get max turns of sleep, which is pretty annoying. But we should expect it at this point <laughs> that things like this are going to happen. I will just click Draining Kiss uh, because his Vileplume no longer resists. We are in great shape. Uh, he does just elect to spin. So, he's super supportive Blastoise. So, we guaranteed get a Draining Kiss here. We <laughs> do a massive amount of damage with a crit. Okay. He will definitely click Yawn again here, which makes me want to set up a single Calm Mind and then go for another Draining Kiss. He actually just flipped turns. Okay, that's great news. Um, as long as his Dawn Fan is not, like, banded, then we're in great shape. It goes back into the Plume. We do get a second Calm Mind here. Uh, so we should knock this out with Moonblast, 91 to 107 to max health. We can look, oh, it's, it's kind of close. He, if he's any Spadef, then we may not knock him out, and that's a little awkward. Draining Kiss would give us a ton of health back, but it definitely wouldn't KO, and then we'd take a full Sludge Bomb. So I don't think Moonblast is our best option. And it does knock him out, okay. So Primarina gets a KO on the board. So what is his win con at this point? I think it's Calm Mind and Didi setting up after he sleeps us with Blastoise or Dawn Fan outspeeding us. Oh, I only just realized he was the Teletubbies. Uh, okay, so yeah, there's there's the uh, little item issue. I hate that for you. I've been there. I know how bad it feels, and I'm sorry. He might be Trick based on how I always ran in DD, I ran a Scarf pretty much always. And if he is Trick, then I th think Moonblast is still my best play. Uh, should always knock out Dawn Fan. It's actually a roll on this. Does just Expanding Force. With no terrain, this can't do very much, yeah. Moonblast may not KO, which would actually be a little tough. It does. That was a roll, almost for sure. Oh no, never mind. That's max health where it was a roll. My bad. <laughs> I forgot how strong we were. So. <clears throat> Don Fan comes in and he, like I said, he could very well outspeed me and it would be bad. He could also be sturdy. He is sturdy. So he was full health sturdy. Okay. Uh, kind of gave up the NDD. Does miss the gunk. I'm sorry. I know how that feels. I've been there many times. <laughs> Actually, not with Gunkshot. I think I'm almost, like, 100% with Gunkshots for some reason. But, yeah, if that had landed, he had to be adamant for it to KO. Or uh, adamant max attack for it to KO. Then, even if he did KO there, he's a one health Dawn fan. So I could have went into Flygon and cleaned up the game with Boom Burst into Dragon Pulse or Boom Burst into Stoice. And then, um, if that doesn't beat uh, Stoys, then I have Reggie Lucky in the back always. So, GG's to my opponent, uh, Primarina, showing why I picked it first. It was my first round pick, Sarah Ledge second. Um, great Pokemon. I think it's absolutely amazing and low tier. Uh, our opponent seems to have left the game a little early, but luckily we have this recording to log our battle. Uh, I understand if, if, if it's some... Salt over the wrong Pokemon and that, that little bit of hacks in the end, the crit draining kiss into the gunk shot mess. I know how it feels. And I think we had the battle pretty well wrapped up there at the end. Uh, there was definitely some chance for counter play. I think he did a fantastic job in the early game. He definitely had us switching like crazy. I could have made more aggressive plays. I was trying to play a little more prediction reliant. It did not work as well as I thought it would. But we did end up with the win.
Uh, bringing us to two and one. Uh, I believe that puts us differ our differential in the positive if it wasn't before. I think we might have been barely negative or neutral. And yeah, uh, if you enjoy, leave a like and I will see you next week.